Hey guys, this is Geeky Mania. We are your hosts, Michael, that is. Ben. And, and I'm is... Mark. How's that been? It was, it was alright, yeah. So, but you've kind of forgot what we're talking about. Yeah. Which is, we are reviewing Les Miserables. Indeed. Or as all the cool kids are calling it, Les Miserables. Or as I call Les it, Les Mis, because I can't pronounce Miserables. Les Miserables. No, Miserables. See, that's why I just call it Les Mis, because of these same, things actually pronounce it pronounce properly. Oh, is but it yes. like in England? The Miserable. It's a musical that was a musical and is now yes. a film and directed by that guy who did Queen's Star. Mark, what did you think of The Miserables? I thought it was a good film. I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was quite good. I thought it was quite inter interesting, the story and that sort of thing as well. And I thought all oh, the actors in it were rather good. And I thought Hugh Jackman for me sold the whole movie. I think it was very, very good. And Russell Crowe second. What do I think, though. Ben? Um, what do you think? Yeah. For me, it wasn't very miserable. I, I don't think I didn't make me sad at all. It didn't make so. It didn't make you sad when that poor woman had to sell her teeth and sell her hair I and sell her weird. body for. Which yeah, that's weird. So, oh, <laughs> why she's doing that? She could just get money like doing something else. Yeah, she's not going to go exactly. hungry or nothing. <laughs> well, she she just got forced to sell her teeth and hair. Or what about that time that that those two were in love, but then there was that girl on the other in the third wheel, and she was just like, "But I love him, but he'll never love me." Did that not? Was that not the sads? That wasn't the sad. Or oh, the girl the bit where Cosette slow, lost yeah. her father. But then again, I didn't cry. Or what about that. Jean Valjean's heroic redemption because he was a no good, dirty thief hobo who hated no, the world. Cool. No, that's exciting. And then no, wasn't it? it was, <laughs> Okay, so I'm clearly hosting a podcast with two idiot delinquents who do not understand the finer points of this. And Russell Crowe was actually quite good. He was, wasn't he? So it's quite funny having Wolverine and the Gladiator both sing with each other, isn't it? I had a few problems with this film, but they're not really problems with the film as much as they're problems with the story. So I guess I probably have problems with the book and the play as well. <laughs> but basically. All the time the Hugh Jackman's character, Jean Valjean, is on the screen, I was enraptured and it was bloody brilliant because yes. Hugh Jackman is selling this like hell and is surprisingly good at singing and I felt emotional and welled up almost. I think he was awesome. No, don't break my train of thought. <laughs> but the problem with the film is, is that every time Jean Valjean isn't on the screen, I just kept on thinking, where's Jean Valjean? What's Jean Valjean doing right now? I wouldn't know what Jean Valjean thinks of this situation right now. So the whole third act for me was kind of disappointing in a lot of places. Because you had, it's like, look, look at this young couple. Aren't they so cute and lovely? Don't you love them? You should love them. Please love them. It needs to, for the story to work. But I didn't really love them. I found them quite annoying and insipid and childish. And yeah. But then some of them got killed, so it's all okay. I know what you mean. No, I felt the same way about you, Ben. I felt the only reason you I felt the connected... same way about me. Yeah, that you no, think it... I trailed off during the first. No, act, no. I mean, I agree with you. And that my love that... story is pointless. <laughs> no, I agree. I, I see how it is. I agree with you. You don't want to love anyone, you're Mark. About... I've always loved you, Ben. Yeah, no, you're, just, you, you're just Mark's jealous of me on. possibly loving other people. I see how it is, Mark. I'm always wondering where Ben is. I know. I love that man so much. Ah. But basically, what, what I mean is, guys, is like I get what Ben's saying about the fact that you. Can't get more of Jean Hal John in it because he's it there at the whole film. So he feel it more connected connected to him. Where with people like Anne Hathaway, who is apparently one of the most people who were prominent on it, only with there fifteen minutes. Same with uh, I didn't the, mind Fontaine. Um, Fontaine's character's quite good and serves the plot. It's just when you have this annoying love story between Cosette and I think Marin was his name. Yeah, but it didn't um, interest me enough because they weren't on the screen enough to you feel much much a connection with where at least with Hugh Jackman's character you did because he was in it the whole film so it was connected with him a lot more because uh, yeah. they were in it for like five ten minutes at the most you didn't really feel like when she was dying in his arms a bit like I just yeah. didn't find the riots believable because you know it's not it's not boy meets girl friendship breathes into romance and romance tails off and becomes happy no it's literally boy glances at girl Boy falls insanely in love with girl, and girl, girl falls insanely in love with boy, and then they want to have the babbies. But it's... sometimes that happens, man. In the olden days, he used to have it all the time. Look no. at Rome's and Jewels, another famous story. A glance, 
falls in love. I don't care if it happened in old historical tales, that's not how love usually works, and even then it's, it's not, not very miserable. believable. It's just like, oh, you should care about these guys now, because they're totally in love. Totally. Clearly, look at them. They're in love. They're and also, also as well... Eponine was more believable, and she was just... You didn't get enough time to care about her, because it was just like, falling yeah. over the guy and just going like, Oh, I wish I could be with him, but he's with her. <laughs> yeah, and then so she wasn't, it. and then she yeah. died, and then it's like, oh, yeah. okay, well, you didn't give me enough time to care about her, so I don't care about her that she's dead, and he doesn't care about her, clearly, because he's moved on in about ten seconds flat, and just like, oh, well, maybe my corsette is waiting for me after the battle. Uh, I thought the battle was quite cool, though. Oh, way. yeah, it was good. It's just that love, that love story didn't, and the, uh, and, didn't and, and I honestly thought the setting and the scene of photography for myself was really good. Like... I thought that was awesome. really good. It's a really good film. The only problem I have with it is I didn't care about that love story. Everything else, mm. Hugh Jackman was stunning. Uh, mm. Russell Crowe's singing was a bit off at places, but mostly pretty good. And Hugh he Jackman was, was the man in that film. Hugh Jackman was stunning. Hugh I mean, Jackman was awesome. Uh, he, yeah. well, I'd be surprised if he wasn't a huge contender for the Oscars, even though Daniel Day-Lewis probably has that in the freaking bag, because the Oscars love that kind of crap. Well, Daniel Day Lewis is a fantastic actor, though, dude. Some of the films I've seen. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not brilliant. saying he's not a fantastic actor. I'm just saying the whole thing that he's in is just the Oscars just gush so much over that. It's Spielberg. It's a period piece about a president, and there's an actor in it who's the, already won Oscars before. The Oscars absolutely good, so. adore historical. Like, look yeah, at look, last. Yeah, I know. Look That's at what I'm saying. Two years ago, with the. It's more, I'm sorry. I know. King's Speech. But yeah. Um, I would give that film a four star rating. I think that's a good, solid film. I'll give that film a Actually, probably... I'm not even sure if it is four stars, because that... I'd say it's three and a half. I'll give that film a three and a half, also, but then I mentioned about the fact is I didn't like the fact how it was like 95% singing and 5% talking, where it should have been at least... It's all a musical! But it should be at least 100% singing, or if it, like in no. my musicals, they have a lot of talking, but they also have singing as well to do emphasise. No, it's fine just having a musical, and, which is all music. And we, and we forgot to mention, how good was Sasha Baron Cohen and Helen Bonham Carter in that oh, film as well? Brilliant comic relief, which is yeah. very well needed. I mean, uh, very well done, just mm. in general. But would you, that how, how's that a problem? It's like, oh, well, they should have gone the whole hog and had every word sung. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have worked wouldn't if Sasha worked. Baron Cohen had sung, Our dear courgette. It wouldn't have had the same impact as him just subtly, like subtly saying, "Oh, you wouldn't take our dear Courgette, would you?" Courgette. Yeah, Courgette. Cor yeah, is. It, yeah. What, is that mean. your is that your problem that he should have sang that? And no, it's, it's the whole hog. No, it's kind of it's kind of like in the sense where I don't know when they because they sing it all the time. The songs, yes, they're important, but they don't feel as important. Where we love other musicals where they talk but then also sing the song which kind of makes it seem a, the song really important it's like their thing where, where it's kind of like they sing basically what they're saying and it's just like but you could just just poke in that and then sang proper songs to be like you know yeah but it, add they, more atmos they the still film. get the emotion through with the singing and if anything it does the the way they separate the songs from the normal dialogue singing is through music background music you don't, and through backing singers, and you know, it's just like, it's very clearly distinct and the songs mm. still feel significant. Uh, so uh, I think your point is wrong, fair personally. Enough. Fair enough. But hey, really big news guys, Ben thinks Mark's wrong. I know, that's the greatest disagreement. <laughs> but also, you got to say, for, no. the, I know, for the fact that they sang all the songs <coughs> live, I thought it was rather well done. I thought that was a little bit of a gimmick. I think it wouldn't have taken too much away if they'd just recorded it all in the studio. It's good the way it is. It's interesting, but yeah. So, Mikey. your star rating, you never told us. Well... Yeah. Unless you don't like star rating. It'll probably, be, it'll probably have a high rating because I, I didn't expect to really like it. I mean, I knew it'd be good because it's a huge production and there's a lot of hype around it, but I, I sort of got dragged along I didn't think I'd enjoy it, but surprisingly I did, so I'd say I'd give it a four star, but just because I didn't think I'd like it. <laughs> you gave so, it four stars because it surprised you, not yeah. because it was great. Yeah. <laughs> not, I didn't expect it to be good. So okay. same thing with Ben with Pitch Perfect. He was surprised just how good it was. One of the films. You don't, True. don't really. I, w I wouldn't say the surprise was a factor in me boosting my score. <laughs> I mean, could have been. Good. Yeah. Anyway, but um, at the same time, though, people are, uh, we work with at the cinema was we're blabbing on. So yeah. 
So, cheers. That was Geekomania, guys. As usual, that's Michael. And that is Mark. And that's the Ben. And we are Geekomania. And we are Geekomania, See guys. See you later, guys. Take care, and remember next time. to like, follow, and share. comment. And share and stuff. Bye, guys. And watch you again. Bye. You social networking whores. <laughs> we like the social network. It's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs>